Chapter 8 of SDM 4 opens with the idea that we need to be making sure that our models fit. We need to be using judgment. That aspect of statistical thinking is critically important, particularly when we think about fitting regression models. This uh, chapter talk kind of steps through stuff we're going to be doing throughout the semester, uh, including our projects. Um, beginning with the idea of examining the residuals, we started to see a little bit of that at the end of chapter um, 7. But now thinking about a situation where, um, for example, a nonlinear relationship is in place and we need to be, um, be looking at that. Different ways we can be looking at the residuals of that. We can think about the, trying to identify other subgroups that might be there that are, are important for us to be modeling. Um, we have these idea of predicted values versus residual plots, uh, which will be kind of a common way of thinking about those relationships. Can think about different subsets, kind of the idea of a third variable. This is a this as aspect of multivariate thinking. What we saw in chapter two with Simpson's paradox also can arise here. The perils of extrapolation, I think, are, are really important to be thinking about. Um, there's a nice example here from XKCD and some other ones in terms of, of pricing and time. Um, so there's you know aspects where uh, again we need to be thinking about the broader picture and not just blindly extrapolating beyond the data. So we also need to be careful about how we use these models in terms of predicting changes, and that's actually covered in this section. And then the idea that there are kind of important observations, uh, outliers, leverage, and influence uh, comes out in this uh, presidential uh, voting example. Section 8.3, aspects, aspects where there can be both high leverage or influential points, and the differences between those. Uh, different ways of seeing what the impact is of uh, extreme values. And then the idea of lurking variables or confounding variables. That is a slightly different definition of uh, confounding variables than the authors, and we'll talk some more about that. Um, but the idea of thinking about a third variable that could actually be the cause of a relationship between these. Um, working with summary um, values is something that we will uh, we will see. If we have things uh, aggregated at the at that level, will tend to be less variable, and so we're going to have um, uh, kind of different results. Um, so it's a good useful way of kind of thinking about some of these other approaches. Finally, we end as always with what can go wrong. And so it's, it always work, it's useful to be reading those closely um, and then also thinking about uh, learning objectives. There's not a lot new here in the SDM 4 and R materials uh, that we've also made available. We have the idea of the scatter plot. We've added in here, as you can see, a smoother. So by saying type equals P, R, and smooth, gluing those together with the C function, the concatenate function, we actually get the sense of the scatter plot smoother here, and we can see that the straight line and that curved line don't really correspond to each other. There's, there seems to be a pronounced curve to this, which is what the book talks about on page 220. We can also be looking at other things. We see that from the residual diagnostics. We've kind of taken off the linear term there and see a very strong curvilinear effect. <coughs> if we look at the distribution of the residuals, they're decidedly not normal. Um, we have um, this uh, kind of, you know, big tails on both sides, doesn't really drop off. And then the idea that there is um, some relationship here. If we just plot the points, we can't really tell what's what because of the overplotting. So the jittering will help uh, considerably. Finally, we have the stratification um, put together. And uh, we're going ahead and creating this new thing that has a better label. The book data set provides shelf one, two, and three. Bottom shelf, middle shelf, and top shelf seem to be better uh, ways of describing that. So we're using mutate here to create that new variable. We can see that we've done things correctly. And now we can go ahead and do uh, multivariate plots. And now we have xy plot along with the group equals shelf group. By saying auto.key equals true, it gives us this nice legend here. And we can represent and regenerate that plot from the, from the textbook. This chapter, we are thinking about different ways of assessing regression models. Uh, as always, practice makes perfect. I encourage you to work some problems from the back of the book.